My Little Universe is one of the most Marmite gaming experiences that I've had in the last couple of years. And I think what I've learned through this is that resource farming games are possibly just not for me. However, if you really enjoy grinding away, looking for various different resources to get a small, sharp dopamine hit as you complete tiny little objectives, then My Little Universe could be a fantastic game for you. And keep on watching and I'll explain how it all works. I think, though, for me, I questioned my life choices and didn't want to complete the game. <laughs> In My Little Universe, you play as a character either in single player mode or up to four players in local split screen co-op that are dropped into a nine planet universe. It's covered by the fog of war. You don't know what is out there. And the idea is that you start mining or chopping down various different resources. And that could start off with some wood or some iron. And then eventually you'll be able to use some machines to convert them into planks of wood or steel girders or turning gold nuggets into coins. And then you'll start to run into dungeon areas where you can start to mine different types of gems. There might be some levels where you go underwater and you're starting to hack away at some of like the coral so that that can be turned into a different resource. There's lots and lots of different resources that you can mine and chop down and more and more will become available as you go through these nine planets. However, the concept remains the same. Stand next to whatever it is that you're mining and watch it do its thing. <laughs> Once you've collected your resource, you'll then dump it into the tiny little square that's on every single hexagonal tile that tells you the next tile that you're supposed to unlock. Now, it could start off with 100 logs, for example, or 100 pieces of wood. Then once you drop that down, the next hexagonal tile becomes available and it will give you the goal for the next one to unlock, probably 200 wood. Then three, four, five, and it will go up to several thousand as you slowly pull out and reveal the planet that's around you. Every hexagonal tile will usually have something on it, so that might be another type of resource or more resources of the same. It could be a monster that you can then with your sword chop down, and we'll get onto combat in a second because it's clunky at best. And the other thing that is kind of the overarching theme is that you're trying to collect these like celestial orb type things that you can then place into a portal and unlock the next planet to travel through it through your portals. That's the main goal. In order to do that, you'll have to wander into some dungeons, which they make sound much more exciting than what they actually are, because it's the exact same concept again, except inside, rather than it actually being um, like in an overworld. What I will say, though, is that the dungeons are usually quite well themed graphically and do offer up at least a little bit of visual change up from what's going on as you move through the nine planets. The concept, though, remains the same. Stand next to the resource, wait for it to mine, wander to the next one, do the same, hope that the other thing has regrown by the time you wander back to it again, just keep on mining, dropping it down and watching the next tile unveil. Was it addictive? Yes. Did I hate myself for finding it addictive? Also yes. <laughs> and therein lies my problem. I was questioning my life choices because all this is is a massive grinder of mine the resource, drop it down, do the next thing, do the next thing. And the game constantly scales up how much you need to drop down for the next tile. And whilst you can upgrade all of your weapons, again, that takes more resources and coins to do so. The then requirements of what you need to like unlock the next tile goes up at the same rate as what you upgrade your weapons with. So therefore you never feel like there's any real progress. You're just unveiling the next tiny little tile. And that started off being quite an addictive game loop early on. Several hours in though, I'd really had my fill and was starting to get quite annoyed with my little universe because nothing ever changed. Yes, you move to a new planet. Yes, it might have a different aesthetic. Yes, there might be different types of uh, trees to cut down or gems to mine but it's just a different colour the exact same thing applies and so all you're doing is going okay now I'm mining pink things oh I'll mine some green things oh, okay whatever off and away I go nothing ever changes and I was absolutely bored to tedium whilst also wanting to then unlock the next tile at the same time 
And this is exactly why I don't mobile game. And this is a mobile game with the microtransactions taken out for you to buy it at a mid-tier price so that you can then experience the grinding of a mobile game for very... Well, without the microtransaction faff that's going on in the meantime. There are a couple of things that you can do outside of resourcing. The first one is a fishing game, which is a rhythm game where you press different uh, directional buttons on the D-pad to the right time to unlock various different fishes. They seem to be kind of randomly generated depending on where you go to to fish, and I found that game to be um, very minor in my enjoyment of this uh, overarching experience. The other thing is the combat of the various different monsters, and this was where I think the disappointment of this game was compounded for me. The monsters just kind of run towards you but get stuck on all of the things that you're trying to mine. So if you just position yourself the other side of what you're trying to mine, you can kill everything without it ever getting to you. There's no dodge, there's no roll out of the way, it's just run away from things. And so when it comes to the sub-bosses of each level, or the overarching boss, or boss of like an entire planet, quite often you just run in, do a couple of sword attacks, then just run away whilst they do the exact same move for every single boss. A couple of them are octopuses, so you just have to avoid some tentacles coming down. Most of them are like trolls, so they kind of wave around an axe or a sword and then do a spin attack, which you just have to avoid, and avoid some maybe explosive devices or some fire that might shoot out of a wall. Nothing much changes, they all feel very copy-paste. And because the combat is so clunky, because there is no dodge or defend, you just attack automatically and then run away... It feels really clunky and really unsatisfying and contributes to that whole hands-off function that this entire game lives and breathes off of. When you then are trying to have combat in a tight area that's also filled with resources, I found that the auto-select of what weapon or mining equipment that the character is supposed to have got confused so it wouldn't necessarily prioritize attacking a monster over resourcing say some trees or some uh, rocks or a gem somewhere and because different weapons um sorry the sword that you've got for, for an attack only really works on enemies everything else doesn't really hurt enemies very much you'd kind of just go ah and so i'd be finding myself wrestling between the auto options for it auto switching the weapon whenever I was out in the field, but then needing to take over manually when it came to close combat with other things around me um, because it was just less stress that way. That whole lack of refinement kind of then went across to how you move between platforms because I was getting enemies stuck in walls, I was getting stuck in walls. I'd fall through the floor, I'd end up stuck in lava where I'd kind of fallen through the floor and then that would be a game over type thing where you respawn with a slightly lower level at the beginning of the dungeon that you were last in. And so that on top of the pure grinding then led me to just become quite frustrated with this game as a whole. And so whilst I do think some people will absolutely enjoy this because of that drip feed dopamine effect of seeing the next tile constantly unveil before you, I gave up midway through World 5 of 9 because I'd been going for about 10 hours and I'd really, really, really had my fill. I probably will never come back to complete this game. I think this has affirmed some gaming life choices for me that this type of game is probably not for me and because there's nothing else going on in this world I feel like this is a poor relation to say like a farming sim because then you've got a world that you're building or there's characters to interact with and there's some kind of overarching story this lacks all of that it is just purely resource farming and that is it and if that satisfies you, satisfies you, sorry, then great. But for me, I was just left wanting for so much more, and I got none of it. 
Rain review will be over on highplanegames.com. Any comments or questions, leave them down below. Take care. Higher Plane Games is part of the Higher Plane Network, a completely independent media outlet supported by people like you. The goal is to create the best possible content that cultivates a richer indie scene for games as well as music and entertainment. To find out more and to get involved, visit patreon.com forward slash higher plane network. Your support makes all the difference and in return you'll gain access to bonus content and downloads. Thank you for watching.